So what to look for for fish? So basically, this is tuna that we're going to be making simple sashimi out of. And when you get tuna, you want to be able to get the largest piece possible for the group size that you have. So if you're cooking for 10 people, you want to be able to get, say, a three pound chunk of tuna. It's better to get the larger the piece, the nicer logs that you'll be able to get for sashimi, which is, this is what we call these are logs, okay? So what this is now, as you can see, is you want to look for something that is not slimy. You want to look for something that has a bright, bright red color. And you want to look for something that has very little smell, if any. And you also want to look where you can see over here that it has a really dense pattern to it. Because if tuna kind of has a little strata through it, sometimes it means that it's been mishandled and it's been kind of bounced around a little bit. So you want it very tight and compact. And that's what this piece uh, looks like right here. So tight, compact, bright red color, and then you want to be able to have it, if they're not in exact logs, maybe they're in a piece like this, that's where we're going to just cut them into sashimi style logs where you can basically slice it and be able to eat it in one to two bites depending on how big your mouth is. Mine is big, so I love nice big thick slices of sashimi. Then after the tuna, what we're going to do is show you, this is a whole fish and this is the intimidating part for most people is to get a whole fish at home. And it's not necessary to get the whole fish, but if you really are up for the challenge, there's no better way to eat fresher sashimi. Because what you can look for is bright eyes. Okay, so you can see here, the eyes aren't cloudy, they're not murky, the eyes uh, are really crystal clear. And you wanna look for a fish also that is not dry. So you can see this fish is wet, the skin is very firm when you press it. All its fins are still on, so you know that uh, it hasn't been beaten up a little bit. And you also, again, want to smell it. It should have no smell and no slime. And if the fish does have some slime, when you get a whole fish, because a lot of times when you get a really, really fresh fish, whether it be in, in rigor mortis or if you just catch it, a lot of times it's almost like a sweating mechanism. So what you want to make sure you do is, if there is slime where you look at it and the eyes are crystal clear, the gills, here the gills have kind of been cut out, but you want to look for red, red, red gills. But if there is some slime on it, just rinse it under cold water and put it in some ice and then you can kind of rub the slime off. So slime is not the reason for a bad whole fish sometimes. Sometimes it can be the freshest fish will have some slime on it. And then you can see on both sides of the fluke here, you can see how clear again, the white side is. So this is a fish that's been treated beautifully. It's not bruised up. Sometimes you'll see like uh, almost like black and blue marks or, or you know, some gaff marks where sometimes uh, there's been uh, a hook or something inserted into it and it kind of rips the meat open. So you want something, again, that's very, very smooth, very firm. You can see that there's no give whatsoever when I'm pushing in the fish. Okay. And that's for the fluke. And then we're going to be making what I love is, again, especially depending on where you live, to get live, uh, live seafood. And these are live scallops. And if you live on the coast, um, you know, whether it be in Maine or, or Boston or uh, New York or you know, uh, San Francisco, uh, Seattle, Portland, a lot of times you can get live scallops if you, if you ask. Sometimes it takes maybe two or three days uh, ahead of time just to give somebody the heads up. But live scallops are the easiest thing. It's easier to shuck than an oyster. Clams are very difficult to shuck. But, uh, but again, all you have to do is ask for live scallop. And if you can't get a live scallop, get the largest scallops that you can get and just ask for diver sea scallops. And that means that people have, are diving into the water to pick up these scallops that they're not generically pulled out by nets or, or things like that where the scallops can uh, sometimes be at sea for you know, five days or six days before they even come back into land. So these are people that dive in, pick them up, bring them in, and they're called day boat scallops. So the day that they're caught, the day that people are on boats, are uh, when they will bring live scallops, uh, or the freshest, uh, most delicious scallops in from the market. And again, with these oysters, we're talking about sashimi and fish today, but oysters, easiest and most delicious way to prepare any kind of uh, crudo, a sushi, and then you can also eat them as a really delicious ceviche 
just by putting a simple vinegar or citric acid sauce. So again, even if you're intimidated by any of these, at least try this with oysters. All right, and then with the tuna, a lot of people ask frozen versus fresh. And it's funny because in Japan, all the best tunas that you get, the otoro, the chutoro, and the, those huge like 500 pound uh, frozen blocks of tuna that you see at, uh, at Skiji Market in Tokyo are all frozen. So don't be intimidated by frozen tuna, but just make sure, again, that when you're looking at it and you defrost it very slowly, sometimes over a period of a day or two, in your refrigerator, always. Never defrost fish at room temperature and never run water over it because that will definitely bruise it and the fish is so porous, it'll be like a sponge and it'll absorb all that water and take all that beautiful texture and flavor out of it. So frozen is fine. Just make sure, again, you're buying it from a reputable person and just make sure that you're defrosting it in your refrigerator, wrapped in plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out and should be no problem whatsoever.